Thanks a lot for joining me on this Monday afternoon. It is dated the 7th of August 2017. If you have any questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to email me. My email address, personal email address is success at pivotpoint-trading.com. Now, I have a couple of stocks as at the close, which I want to update you on. The first stock is Goldman Sachs because Goldman Sachs is a stock which we've been following for a number of weeks now anticipating this trade. The trade itself today broke out. You can see on my screen right here, 231.22 is the bullish trigger. We closed up at 232.92. So in today's trading session, if you were or if you did enter into call option contracts, it has been a relatively profitable day for you. The good news is that as the weeks and months continue, we assume that Goldman Sachs is going to start or at least continue its bullish ascent. The reason for that is because over time we have been running into macro support. And as you can see, and if you can uh, sort of paint the picture for yourself or what you're trying to see on my, on my screen right now is that we've got some form of an inverse head and shoulders reversal pattern which is taking place. This is also coinciding, I'm changing the chart right now to the weekly chart, to that of an intersection once again or a new interaction with that rising bullish trend line. So we've got multiple points or at least a confluence of macro support building and which has built over the past three months or so we're also, also seeing a number of uh, bullish divergences across some of these oscillators on my screen right now, most prominently of that of the MACD. This is very, very important, which is giving us, of course, the strength in terms of momentum, which is pushing price action back up uh, to the bullish side. And you can see, again, we're closing above the exponential moving averages. Volume is relatively stable too, which is a good sign for Goldman Sachs. And if I change to the CCI, please pay attention to this. Surprise, surprise, the CCI has cracked that positive 100 reading and the ADX has just turned up. So this trade right here is making us very, very happy as at the close on Monday. Now, obviously, we have to be prepared for potential market pullbacks, a little bit of turbulence if, in fact, these markets do sort of move out of their low volatility state that they currently find themselves in. Obviously, the Dow Jones Industrial Average continues to move to the upside. We closed up 25 points today, so the markets are relatively stable. We also have the S&P 500 again closing up four points, but we haven't definitively broken above our, uh, our next continuation trigger. By the way, if you go back on my screen and just pay attention to some of these entry points, these are all retrospective entries to, uh, to start opening up anyway or accumulating long-term positions for the bullish continuation of these markets moving higher. So that is capital exposure, which is already playing out very well for us. Again, this is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. My screen looks a little, a little bit like a dog's breakfast, so to speak, but you can see all these retrospective uh, types of entries that we have had. I don't have a new entry moving into the week for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The reason for that is because the Dow itself is, is quite stretched. And what you can do in terms of a simple exercise is just simply go back in history and have a look at well, once price action moves X distance away from either the 10 rising exponential moving average or the 20 exponential moving average, okay, you can see generally when price action will slow. We can also break this down in terms of percentage movements away from these exponential moving averages. But again, in terms of extremes or parameters that we find ourselves moving away from, we're expecting somewhat of a slowdown in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now, again, this isn't an all out reversal, but uh, the movement today, Closing up 25 points, that is fantastic for a lot of these bullish trades. Again, it sits quite well for the, for the most recent bullish trade being Goldman Sachs. Uh, but just expect over the coming week for these markets to potentially slow. And again, that sort of uh, really espouses or encompasses some of the price action that we've seen continue on the S&P 500. You can see how it's just simply moving sideways, but also on that of the NASDAQ. Now, the NASDAQ today on Monday closed up 32 points. We are respecting this green box. That is pretty good to see. Uh, but at the same time, we haven't definitively moved above the candlestick, which is dated the 27th of July, where essentially we came back down and refilled the open gap, which at this particular point, it does look as if it is some form of an exhaustion gap. Uh, we didn't see the true follow through as a continuation or measuring gap. But again, we are still relatively constructive in terms of our outlook for these markets. Um, obviously, that will change if the technical picture changes. But at this particular point, the markets are still looking relatively strong. Now, I've recapped uh, Goldman Sachs, uh, another stock which is somewhat different to Goldman Sachs, or at least moving in a different um, <clears throat> actual direction is that of IBM. Now, IBM, it closed down very close to $1.70 today. You can see these two retrospective entries. Personally, I'm not in IBM, but this is quite interesting because IBM is relatively weak in the face of a, of a you know, relatively strong market. And even today, 
uh, it broke down again, registering new lows. We've got a dividend uh, expected to be paid tomorrow. So generally, once that dividend is paid, people uh, will, will sort of uh, accumulate or at least dump uh, their open positions on, on, on the actual uh, stock itself to take advantage of that dividend payment. So if you are in this to the downside, it may be a, a quite an opportunity for you to actually liquidate this position either on the 8th or on the 9th if you see continued weakness in the face of a strong market. It could be a really good opportunity for you to, to actually bank those profits again to uh, realize those profits, uh, which has been somewhat of a counter trend trade to that of the overall sentiment and the direction of the prevailing market. So I just wanted to point that out to you on, on IBM as well. Now, I've made a little bit of a, a checklist on three other uh, additional stocks, which I'll quickly update you on. The first stock is MU. The reason for this is because we have observed and uh, anticipated potentially a turning point around this 2750, 28 area. Well, today we closed up 67 cents, not the biggest of moves, but it certainly looks like once again, very similar to that of Goldman Sachs, that once we are coming back down to retest this bullish trend line or associated bullish trend lines, which are in effect, we are continuing to see the bounce off from them. And it's looking to be evident and the case for that of MU. So I've spoken about this. We've got the green box drawn as per a potential macro support area. We are seeing the bounce off from the top of that green box at the moment. And again, it looks as though this trend wants to continue. So I'll leave that with you for MU. Also, in addition to this, another stock, which is at a very important turning point potentially, might be that of HD. Now, HD, uh, the bottom fell out of this stock uh, a number of weeks ago. We hit support, we've bounced, we've rallied, but we've come back up into this red box. So pay attention to HD moving forward. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens with this. We have earnings. I mean, it's scheduled for the 15th of August, but uh, we may see a little bit of uh, some volatile price action before then. It's going to be interesting also to see the response or at least the reaction to earnings because right now the picture, or at least the technical snapshot of HD is rather bearish. The reason for that is because it looks as though we've sort of made a double top. We've essentially retested the neckline, which took place during the beginning of July. We've broken down below the neckline and it seems as though we're coming back up to retest it once again. Now, that's why the color of this box is red. If you see a red box on my screen, it represents resistance, whereas if you see a green box, it represents support. Now, on top of that, we also have what appears to be an exhaustion gap over here, also an island reversal too. And every time HD has come back up to about this 160 area or just shy of 160, it's actually reversed, which is relatively interesting. Now, we've potentially priced in some subsequent lower lows. I mean, if you have a look at the lows over here, I mean, we got there a couple of weeks ago, but we also have some divergence, which has been forming for quite some time. So HD is relatively mixed. And the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention is because it's going to be very important. Uh, what I guess the uh, I guess the tone uh, is sent in terms or your, pardon me, is positioned or set in response to earnings, which again is, is uh, at least scheduled for the 15th of August. So it's something to have on your radar also. Now, it's outside of that and outside of our pro list, we have Facebook again. It is or it did at least today act uh, quite strong up $2.36. We've been looking for the bounce off from this gap. Now we haven't closed the gap, but at the same time we're bouncing off from that rising 10 exponential moving average. So it's something to pay attention to. Also, we have a continuation trigger at about 176.48. Now in our pro list, we have a lot of individual stocks which are set up very nicely. The majority of them haven't triggered, but it looks as though given the market's uh, current low volatile trending type of phase, that it finds itself in, it wouldn't be surprising to assume that a lot of these trades that I've spoken about over the weekend are going to trigger, all right? There's a lot more or less on the precipice of breaking out and that is relatively exciting or it is very exciting. And uh, it's something to, of course, go through in your own trading accounts to go through with your own analysis and if you feel comfortable doing so, uh, placing it in your own account, whether or not that is real money or virtual funds, that is your decision. You, uh, I guess, are autonomous. But I mean, even myself sitting down and looking at this repeatedly day in, day out, uh, there is a lot of opportunity out there, especially in our pro analysis uh, list over here on the left hand side of my screen. So uh, enjoy the rest <coughs> pardon me, of your evening, everyone. I'll be back with you during the week. Again, I encourage you to email me. Uh, outside of that, everyone, I'll be back with you in due course. It's James signing off on behalf of Pivot Point Trading. Goodbye. Thank you.